In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this circuit step by step. I got the schematics here. These schematics say the same thing, but this one is the way I have it laid out on the breadboard now. So all this really does is the capacitor is charging now and the LED turns on to let you know that it's charging. The LED fades down and when it's not lit anymore, you know the capacitor is full. Now, this other LED, when I push this button, you see that lights up. That lets us know that the capacitor is discharging. So now, this isn't a complicated circuit or anything, but these are the uh, three or four first components you should learn when you learn electronics. And the better you learn these, the easier time you'll have learning future topics such as transistors and integrated circuits because they use all these same components with them. So now let's begin with the switches. The switches don't pop in and out of the board very easily and the pins on the switch are a little bit bigger than leads of components so it kind of stretches out the hole so I leave the switches where they are which is where they are now. Now this top one as you can see that's the positive side and in this case I'm using a 9 volt battery you can use a different voltage battery but uh, this is the positive side so you see the top pin up here I connect to positive remember these switches are separated from top to bottom when I push the button the top part connects to the bottom part now this push button switch here is connected to the negative to the ground and sometimes this is signified by a long line on top, medium line below it, and then a shorter line below that. That uh, stands for ground. Same thing. So, this case I have the bottom pin here connected to negative because I want to connect that to the top part of the switch because the circuit will be in the middle here. So now that brings us to the capacitor. In this case, I'm using a 470 microfarad capacitor, but uh, it doesn't need to be this one, but this is a, a good size for this circuit. And so it goes towards the positive switch there and then towards the negative switch there. So I'm going to set it in the middle. Now this is polarized. This side needs to always be uh, at least as negative as the other side. It should be more negative when it's charged. And so the positive side, I'm going to set three holes down there in between the switches and then the negative side of the capacitor I'm just going to put right into the negative side of the breadboard. As you can see here, I got both negative sides of the board connected, so I only have to plug the battery into one side. But that's how I get the capacitor in the middle of the circuit here. So now we come to the two LEDs. So now you notice these are faced the same way. This side stands for the long lead of the LED. This side stands for the short lead. This is the anode, this is the cathode. If you put it in backwards, it won't conduct and it obviously won't light up. That's what makes it an LED. When you see a triangle with the line on the end like this, whether it has arrows or not, that is a kind of diode. So the long lead, as I said, goes towards the positive side. So I'll connect the short lead to the uh, row that the long lead, the positive side of the capacitor is connected to. Right there, short lead's connected there. So now that brings us to the next LED. As you can see here, as I said, this is the anode, the long lead of the LED, which needs to be more positive. That's on the positive side of the circuit, and the short lead heads towards the switch. So in this case, I'll put the long lead in the same row as the capacitor. So now we have the resistor here. This protects mostly the LED from too much current from the battery, but maybe the switch too because uh, that will uh, have a sudden uh, massive amount of current when you first push it. So it goes from the switch to the anode, the long lead of the LED. So now we'll insert it down here where the switch is and then the long lead of the LED. And there you go, the board is old so they don't slide in as easy as they used to. But uh, we got her in now. And then finally, we have the resistor that protects this LED during the discharge. And so these are 470 ohm resistors. That's kind of the minimum you want to protect LEDs from a 9 volt battery. So it does that. But it also slows down the charge and discharge. This one slows down the charge of the capacitor. And then this resistor slows down the discharge of the capacitor. 
so that the LEDs stay lit longer and we can make them stay lit longer by using even higher value uh, resistors but I think this is good for this demonstration circuit especially. So now after checking my connections to make sure I didn't uh, misplace any I connected the battery positive this rail negative that rail remember ne the two negative sides are connected so it's important to check your connections well I was filming this the first time I filmed the scene with this resistor I accidentally connected it where the two LEDs connect so this resistor would have gone to there and bypassed the LED now that wouldn't have damaged the circuit at all luckily but uh, if I wouldn't have uh, checked that I put it in right you know it wouldn't have worked right the first time I would have had to troubleshoot uh, which went, is no big deal either but uh, the second time I shot that scene where I insert the resistor I put it in the right spot but anyways here we have the circuit you can see now the capacitor is charging you know because the top LED lit up and now the capacitor is discharging you know that because the bottom LED lit up so now uh, this was mostly just a step-by-step -step build of this kind of a quick build in the next video I'm gonna go over more of uh, what's actually going on in the circuit in more detail if you're interested in that if you just wanted the step-by-step -step build then this uh, video is for you